Today I'm starting a three-part series on the three kinds of hair loss you find in Hashimoto's patients, what they mean and what to do about it. Today's video is on the classic hypothyroid hair loss pattern, so let's get into it. So the first type of hair loss you find in Hashimoto's patients is what we call the classic low thyroid pattern. I'll describe it briefly right now. The hair loss is diffuse, right? It's not patchy, it's not discreet. The hair can be sparse, you tend to lose it all over. Uh, you can even start to get thinning of the lateral third of your eyebrows, and that's that classic pattern. Now I'm gonna explain why we find that in Hashimoto's in just a second. Let's just define what hair loss is, right? Well, normal amounts of hair to shed in a day are about you know 50 to 100 hairs. So if you're beyond that, then we're probably talking about abnormal amounts of hair loss. So how do thyroid hormones affect hair? Well, they are absolutely critical for normal hair growth and maintenance. Uh, we know that thyroid hormones like T4, T3, and even TSH and TRH are definitely involved in hair growth and hair maintenance. Uh, hair follicles go through a cycle. Uh, there's antigen, catagen, and telogen, which is a resting phase, and your thyroid hormones make that cycle normal, okay? Now, they also affect the rate of hair growth. They affect the production of new hair fibers. Uh, we even know that the hair follicles have receptors for thyroid stimulating hormone and what's called thyrotropin releasing hormone, right? So, if they're that necessary and that critical for normal hair growth uh, and hair follicle maintenance, any reduction, right, or decrease in the amount of those or your responsiveness to those is probably gonna cause an issue. So the classic sort of low thyroid or hypothyroid hair loss patient can have sparse, thinning hair, it's all over. The hair can also be dry, brittle, or just kind of lackluster, right? Now, why does that show up on Hashimoto's? Well, it can show up on Hashimoto's patients uh, at two different times. One, before they get diagnosed with hypothyroidism. So remember, Hashimoto's is the number one cause of hypothyroidism. About nine out of 10 people that get diagnosed with low thyroid, it's because they have Hashimoto's, and Hashimoto's is an autoimmune problem. That's actually gonna be very important uh, when we talk about uh, in part two and part three. About 33% of people with hypothyroidism have hair loss like we've defined it. Now, in my practice over the last 20 some odd years, I would say that easily half of the people with Hashimoto's that I see are complaining about hair loss of some kind uh, in their history and part of their chief complaints. Now, the hair shedding, prolonged hair shedding, that's a little bit different thing called telogen effluvium, which we'll talk about in a, another video. But in Hashimoto's, before you actually get diagnosed hypothyroid, you can have th low thyroid symptoms such as hair loss, right? Dry, brittle, coarse hair, uh, weight gain, other kind of classic low thyroid symptoms. Okay, then you probably start taking thyroid medication of some kind, whether it's levothyroxine or synthroid, one of those kind of things. But if you have Hashimoto's, sometimes that's not enough. Uh, I always say that, you know, uh, there's two kinds of thyroid problems, right? There's a, a quantity problem and there's a usage problem. Well, Hashimoto's creates hypothyroidism, right? It creates a quantity problem where you can't make enough hormones and then you get given medication. But a large number of people, a large number of women that are taking the medication like they're supposed to, uh, whose TSH looks good, whose T4 levels look good, still have low, low thyroid symptoms and still have hair loss. Well, why would that be? Because they have a usage problem. I've made a lot of videos of, uh, about this over the years, but basically what it means is that the thyroid hormone receptors, right, the little things where the thyroid hormones actually attach, uh, those can be blocked or blunted or otherwise kind of messed with. And so what happens is you can have normal looking TSH and normal looking T4 and be taking medication, but not be functioning like it, right? So you can still have hair loss that looks like hypothyroid hair loss, even though technically by your labs, you're not really hypothyroid anymore, right? And that's because the Hashimoto's is probably causing the side effect on those receptors because the number one thing that messes with those receptors uh, is inflammation or cytokines, which are immune system messengers. So you gotta ask yourself, if I have Hashimoto's and I'm taking this medication, uh, but I still have hair loss that looks like I still hypothyroid, what do you do about it? Well, you've got to be working with someone that knows how to track down what's causing uh, your immune system to still be unregulated. Because again, the number one cause of those hair, uh, uh, the number one cause of those thyroid hormone receptors being uh, malfunctioning and you're not getting the benefit of the thyroid hormones you're taking is 
inflammation from some source. Now that can come from a lot of different places. Hashimoto's itself is an inflammatory problem, right? So your Hashimoto's just might not be controlled. So you're gonna have to work with someone that knows how to dig in and kind of dissect your immune system. I like to use a test called a, uh, a lymphocyte map or what we call lymphocyte immunophenotyping. And I'll put an example right here. Uh, that lets you look at, at a very detailed level, what is this person's immune system actually doing? I always tell people, it's like a, an immune system fingerprint test. You know how we all have our own fingerprints, right? Well, we all have our own immune system fingerprints or our own immunophenotypes. Uh, phenotype just means, you know, what does something look like? So even if you have Hashimoto's, your immune system is unique to you. So uh, like if your Th1 is high or Th17 is high, the next person with Hashimoto's might not have that. So the treatment is different. So my point is, is if you've got hair loss and you have Hashimoto's, but you're taking thyroid medication, your TSH T4 looks good, then you're not at the bottom of it, right? Your Hashimoto's is probably not adequately controlled, okay? So you gotta work with someone that understands how to look for that kind of stuff and how to kind of track down where are these, you know, where's the fire, right? Uh, how do we be a good detective and don't leave any stones unturned and really do some digging and find out? So I'm gonna to summarize today's video, right? This is part one of the three kinds of hair loss you find in Hashimoto's patients. And the first one is the kind of classic low thyroid uh, hair loss, which is diffuse, sparse, thinning hair, could be coarse, dry, brittle, lackluster. Now, what does it mean? Well, it means if you have that and you have Hashimoto's, but you're taking medication, you're not really doing everything that needs to be done because your body is behaving as if you are hypothyroid. So something is probably messing with those receptors and you gotta work with someone to track down what that is. And that's what to do about it is get the right testing, work the right doctor, uh, and they can help you figure it out. Uh, so we'll see you next time for part two.